All right, my goal today is to do a couple of examples dealing with conservation of energy. Now, the examples I'm going to be doing are mostly conceptual. Yeah, they're going to have numbers, and yeah, you're going to work things out. But in the end, most of it will be very conceptual, okay? Because I think a lot of physics, we need to understand the concepts before we're able to do the mathematical problem type questions. So let's go ahead and start with this one. We've got a slingshot firing a pebble from the top of a building with a speed of 14 meters a second. The building's 31 meters tall. We're going to ignore the air resistance. We're going to find how fast the pebble is traveling when it strikes the ground, when it's fired horizontally, when it's fired vertically up, and when it's fired vertically down. So let's, let's take first the instance where it's being fired horizontally. Okay, so here's my building. Here's my slingshot, pull it back, and I shoot the pebble horizontally. Of course, as soon as it leaves the slingshot, it starts falling in parabolic motion until it hits the ground, which is 31 meters down. And it's shot with an initial speed of 14 meters per second. All right. Now, the equation that we talked about in class for dealing with energy type problems is that the work by non-conservative forces is going to be equal to the change in kinetic energy plus the change in the, in this case, gravitational potential energy. All right. Now, so the first thing I want to do is I want to be able to figure out, is there non-conservative work being done? And of course, if I can set the problem up in such a way that there is no non-conservative work being done, then I can set this equal to zero, and that's greatly going to simplify the problem in many different ways. Okay, so let's try first. Let's look at what's happening in the problem and decide when the conservative forces are acting and when the non-conservative forces are acting. So I start with the pebble in my slingshot, and I let go, and the slingshot exerts a force on the pebble, which causes it to accelerate to that 14 meters a second, flies out of the slingshot, and then it goes down and hits the ground and eventually stops. Okay, now one of the temptations is to say, oh, well, right here at the beginning, the velocity, the initial velocity is zero, which is going to make my kinetic energy zero. Another temptation is, oh, here at the end, my velocity after it hits the ground and it's going to stop. So my kinetic energy there is zero. But you've got some problems with that. In that, number one, if you start here when the pebble is inside the slingshot, while the slingshot is shooting the pebble, right, the slingshot is exerting a force in the horizontal direction to the right, and the pebble is accelerating and moving in that direction, which means that the slingshot is a non-conservative force doing work on the pebble, which means that this number right here won't be zero. Okay, so we need to start actually the instant that it leaves, which is okay because I still have the velocity at that point. It's 15, 14 meters a second. Okay, now once it leaves, gravity is the only force acting on my pebble, right? Which is good because gravity is a conservative force. Okay, so we got gravity, 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 until right before it hits the ground. Now then it hits the ground and it stops, but again, the ground is exerting a force on the pebble. And the ground exerting force on the pebble is going to be a non-conservative force because it's a contact force which is going to do work on the pebble. And so therefore, we don't want to include the ground because that then would make this non-zero. So we're going to stop in this instant right before it hits the ground. Okay. So now we're able to kind of simplify things. If we start at right after it leaves the the slingshot and right before it hits the ground we end, then the non-conservative work is zero. This will be equal to one half mv squared final minus one half mv squared initial, because that's the final minus the initial is kinetic energy, plus mgh final minus mgh initial. So from there we can go ahead and put in the numbers we have. The final velocity is what we're looking for. Speed is what we're looking for. The initial speed is going to be 14. The final height, 
Now that's right before it hits the ground. Now the nice thing about energy problems is that we can define height zero wherever we want it. Generally speaking, we're going to define it as the lowest point of our object. So that's going to be right here at the bottom. Which means my final height's going to be zero. My initial height, of course, is going to be 31 meters up. So let's go ahead and put all those numbers in. So zero equals one half times m times final velocity squared minus one half times the mass times the initial velocity which is 14 squared plus the mass times 9.81 times the final height which was zero so that's going to go away minus the mass times gravity which is 9.81 times the initial height which was 31 and so from there we see that all the terms have m. Now don't you dare just go cross, cross them all out because your math teacher was skinning you alive. So what you need to do is all of them have m's so you can divide by m. This is one of the reasons why it's so important that we get the work to be zero because if the non-conservative work is zero then when we divide it by m then it's going to stay as zero. Okay, so I'm going to divide everything by m which means that all of these m's are going to cancel out and of course the zero will be divided by m as well and so we'll end up with zero equals one half final, final speed squared minus one half times fourteen squared minus 9.81 times 31. So from there we can kind of figure it out. We can take this one half fourteen squared and I'm going to make it positive because I'm going to add it to the other side and then I'll add a 9.81 times 31 and then we're going to divide by the 1 half and then we're going to square root it and we get 28.4 meters per second. Alright, so that's part A. Now if we go on to part B Okay, this is going to be pretty cool because we're going to go on to part B now and uh, I still got a building, right? Same height, every, uh, pretty much everything is the same except this time I'm going to sh be shooting the pebble straight up. So I'm going to shoot it straight up with a speed of 14 meters per second. So this time it's going to go up, come down, hit the ground. Okay, again we're going to be using the same equation, right? The non-conservative work equals change in kinetic energy plus change in gravitational potential energy. Again, I'm going to start the instant after it leaves the, the uh, slingshot, and I'm going to end right before it hits the ground. Okay, so again, I'm going to be able to say gravity is the only force acting. Gravity is conservative, so the work by the non-conservative forces is zero. So I'm going to copy down this equation right here because that's going to be the same. So zero equals one half m final velocity squared minus one half times the mass times the initial velocity. What was the initial speed? 14 meters a second. See, the nice thing about this is that you don't have to worry about the components, right? Components don't have anything to do with energy because the energies are scalars. And so then we've got mass times 9.81 times the final height. What's the final height in this problem? Well, it's down at the bottom. That's h equals zero, right? Hmm. Well, well, this is looking familiar. So then we go minus m times g times the initial height, which hmm, is 31. This is looking very familiar. In fact, you will notice it's exactly the same thing because the initial speed is the same, the initial height is the same, the final speed, the final height is the same. And so if all those things are the same and it's equal to the same thing, then that means the equation is going to be the same. And when you work it out, you're going to get again that the final speed is 28.4 meters per second. All right. Now I think you can probably guess, I'm not even going to work out C because I think you can see that if I do this, right, and this time I shoot it down at 14 meters per second, my starting height is still 31 meters. My final height is still zero. My initial speed for my kinetic energy is 
14 meters per second. And so if all those things are remaining the same, once the, once the pebble is shot, gravity is the only thing working on it, the only force. So again, it's going to be equal to zero. My final velocity, again, is going to be exactly the same thing. How about that for some smooth moves, eh? All right. So let's look at one more example. All right. This one's going to kind of use the ideas that we were just talking about. All right, the idea that if the starting and final positions are the same and we only have conservative forces and we need to add one other thing into that, that the forces can be non-conservative if they're perpendicular. Okay, so you'll remember that we talked about in class that work is equal to force times displacement, but the force and the displacement have to have components that are in the same direction. Okay, or one can be a full vector and the other can be a component, but they have to be in the same direction, the same component. So let's let's see how that applies to this next equation, next problem. This drawing is showing a guy that's standing up on a cliff. He swings down. If he lets go at this point, then he's going to hit the water traveling 13 meters per second. Okay. If he continues to swing on the rope and let's go here, which is a height of 5.2 meters, then he'll kind of swing up and then land in the water there. All right. So let's think. What are the forces acting on the boy as he's swinging? Can we say that energy is being conserved, right? Because we want to do this whole non-conservative work equals the change in kinetic energy plus the change in gravitational potential energy, right? We want to do that and we want this to be zero to simplify our problem. So if we can, we'll set it equal to zero if we can choose good conditions. So again, let's maybe start the instant that he leaves the cliff, okay? When he leaves the cliff, what are the forces acting on the boy? Hopefully you said that gravity is pulling down on him. Gravity is a conservative force, so that's okay. Conservative forces don't come into play with this non-conservative work. Okay, what are the other forces acting on him? Okay, good. If we're ignoring air resistance, which it tells us to do there, the only other force is the tension in the string. Now, when he's here, his motion is in this direction, and the string is pulling that way. Yeah. That's perpendicular. When he's here, he's moving tangent to the circle. The rope is pulling this direction. Again, perpendicular. I think you can notice that no matter where he is, the rope is always pulling perpendicular, which means that even though the tension is a non-conservative force, it's not going to do any work because right here, the force and the motion are not in the same component. And so therefore, they're not going to be, it's not going to be doing work. And so in this case, we can again say that the work of the non-conservative forces is zero. Okay, so now we need to pick initial and final conditions between when he release, when he jumps off the cliff and when he goes in the water. Okay, now I know that I want the speed. It says how fast is he moving on path two when he releases the rope. So I want to know the speed here. So this needs to be either my initial or my final condition. All right, so let's decide what other positions we could use. Okay. If I knew anything about the top of the cliff, if I knew the height there, then I could maybe say that he started with an initial velocity of zero, right? But that information isn't given to me. So let's look around and see if we can find anything else. If he starts up here, swings down, let's go, where does he end up? He ends up in the water, okay? So if he starts at the top, the forces are all conservative or perpendicular, meaning that the non-conservative work is zero, then when he hits the water, right, the starting height is up here, starting velocity is whatever it is, and the final height is down here, then that will be exactly the same if we're thinking about this problem from above, if he's starting up here and he ends there, right? The height for both of those, whether it be here or whether it be there, is going to be the same. And so if the height is the same initially, and the height is the same finally, and the velocity is the same initially, that means that the final velocity has to be the same. And so that means that right here, the velocity when he hits the water is going to be 13 meters per second. The path doesn't matter. Okay, All that matters are the initial and the final conditions, and that the non-conservative work is zero.
that it's only conservative forces, or that the non-conservative forces are all perpendicular, which in this case, the tension is. All right, so let's go ahead and put in some numbers. So change in kinetic energy, so 1 half mv squared final minus 1 half mv squared initial plus mgh final minus mgh initial. Um, we're using this right here as my initial point. This is my final. So let's go 0 equals 1 half m. We know the final velocity is 13 minus 1 half m v naught squared. So we're saying that my initial point is right here. So that's the uh, that's the velocity that I'm looking for, the speed that I'm looking for when he lets go. Plus m times 9.81 times the final height, which is going to be 0, so that's going to go away, minus the mass times gravity times the initial height. And the initial height is up here, 5.2 meters. Okay, so from there we can go ahead. We can now divide both sides by the mass. That means that these will cancel out. Remember, you have to divide this by the mass too, which is OK because it's a 0. It'll stay 0. So that means we're going to have 0 equals 1 half 13 squared minus 1 half v naught squared minus 9.81 times 5.2. So let's go ahead and punch those numbers in. So I'm going to take the 0.5 times 13 squared and move it to the other side, so negative. 0.5 times 13 squared, and then we've got this minus 9.81 times 5.2, which I'm going to add to the other side. So 9.81 times 5.2, and then I'm going to divide by the negative 1 half and take the square root. And our answer is that. 8.18. Hope that makes sense. Good luck.